my moment of greatest clarity um, happened in maybe 1980, 1982. Um, it was as you can hear, after the 1976 uprisings in Soweto, and it was the time of one of those states of emergency, um, when we were not allowed to gather or rally or whatever it was, and so um, we didn't have rallies, we had church services. And um, this particular church service was to commemorate the deaths of the children on June 16th in Soweto. And the service was held at Regina Mundi Cathedral now in Soweto. Because it was the largest venue at the time in, in, in Soweto. And the place was absolutely packed absolutely packed. They were young people, old people, people in between. They were trade unionists and um, poets and writers and speakers of every kind um, who um, were there to address this service of worship. And um, we had gone, my sisters and I had had gone to the service with, with my father. Um, and so he got the VIP parking inside the yard, inside the churchyard. And um, after the service, um, my father spoke to those gathered and said, you know, as we leave this place, let's leave this place as, as disciplined people. Um, to show what it is that we're made of. And as we came out of the cathedral doors, the, the um, cathedral was almost <coughs> encircled um, with armored personnel carriers, hippos we call them at that time, um, with armored personnel carriers. And then in front of those um, riot police with full riot gear and the shields so high. Uh, I don't know to this day whether it was that someone first threw a stone or that someone panicked and threw a can of tear gas. Whatever the case, um, the the peaceful exit turned into a riot with um, the riot police charging. Um, we had the keys to my father's car, so we jumped into the car. Um, but it became like one of those things of telephone booth. I don't know whether you've ever seen, you know, this, I, I don't know, it's Ameri maybe it's just Americans who do this, um, American college students who do this, that they try to see how many people they can fit into one of those telephone booths. <laughs> yeah, well, that was our car, which was, you know, sort of your normal six-seater, became, I think we had 12 or 13 people packed into the car and my face was sort of squashed up against the dashboard. And um, in all that mayhem, um, my older sister didn't manage to get into the car. And so she had run around the front of the car to take cover and the um, now Archbishop Buti Klachale, who was at that time the rector of Regina Mundi, um, had also come into the yard and was trying to take cover behind our car. And then two riot police came in and um, were, were whipping them with shambogs. Um, and I remember the sense of rage that bubbled up in me. Um, and, you know, just remember wanting to clench my fists and hit back. 
um, the the people the other people in the car were were not getting out of the car for any reason until those riot police left and when they did we all sort of tumbled out of the car and my one sister said you know if I had a hand grenade at this moment I would and I almost joined her in that thought. And then I thought, no. Because if I do that, what is the difference between me and the person on the other side? What does it change? What does it change? There has to be another way. And that moment of clarity um, was maybe the moment that, that moved me into a lot of the work that, that I have engaged in. Um, so I, I went to college and studied electrical engineering. Actually, I went as a fine arts major and changed along the way. So I've definitely taken the scenic route through life. Um, <laughs> Um, and um, and then t you know took a left turn and moved into the nonprofit arena, running a scholarship fund um, for refugees from Namibia and South Africa, and um, there we we brought them into the U.S. for tertiary education, fully funded tertiary education. Um, but it was a way of channeling my anger into something that would bring a positive outcome. Maybe not tomorrow, but somewhere down the road, I was living in the confidence that there would be a new South Africa, and if there was a new South Africa, we would need an educated cadre of leaders for that new South Africa. Um, I have, as I said, taken life very much via the scenic route. Um, I spent a long part of life running away from the vocation to ordained ministry. And so it was only in 2002 that I was finally priested. Um, but that is um, one of my passions. Um, is that role as an ordained minister. And um, although people say I was following in my father's footsteps in ordained ministry, I actually was following in my mother's footsteps. Not in being ordained, but in the way that she ministers. Um, that, that, that her ministry is very much a kitchen table ministry. And people come and talk to her. Um, and it's a, it's an incredible gift of leadership that she offers. And I just wanted to, I wanted to leave you with just a small snippet, um, which is that we don't always have to aim over there and work for, wait for that day when we're on that platform to do the work that needs to be done. The other day I was driving with my mom and there's a, there's a hill that goes up past her house. And um, she, she says, oh, stop, so stop. And there's a woman walking up the hill and she gave her a lift to the top of the hill. And she says, oh, I always, you know, if I see people walking up the hill, you know, sort of not for exercise, I always offer them, I always <laughs> offer them a lift. But, but it's, you know, sort of small, it's small things that mass up to the big thing that is the quality of life that we want for this South Africa. And each of us has in us the ability to do one small thing every day to make someone's life just a little better. So all of us can lead SA. Thank you.